we're back. All right, so the four of you are waiting in a small conference room. Um, when an older looking, uh, very broad shouldered, kind of shortish, uh, maybe human, uh, he has kind of longer style hair, um, a some well kept facial hair, um, a very dark kind of um, uh, like a blend between uh, like a a bit of a chestnutty color, but thick, but dark, but a little darker. Um, kind of steps in. Have the four of you chosen a leader of sorts or ahead of your team? I think it's Brianna, right? She's a knight. You mean Elizabeth? Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, normally yes. I'm the one struggling not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth. Sorry. Uh, is there any uh, voiced objection from Ghoulrun? Uh, no, I think he's content letting her have this one. Okay. He turns and looks to you, Elizabeth. Very good. I am Noslav Brankovich. I will be your director. Um, I will be assigning your missions. And I will be who you will be reporting directly to, unless otherwise told. Okay. As he takes a few steps in, he reaches back. And he runs a hand across the glass of the conference room, and the glass turns jet black. And he walks over, and he pulls back a chair, and he takes a seat and instructs the four of you to do the same. I do. Did, did I know that the glass could do that? <laughs> no. You've never seen that happen before. Okay. So I probably look a little surprised, but I take a seat. I'll begrudgingly take a seat. We'll see. I am... Um, to understand that... In some of... In the progress of some of what you've been doing, you've encountered fey creatures, is that correct? Correct, sir. Yes. Our uh, first case dealt with a fey creature. this correctly. I think I am correctly, but no. Okay, yeah. Um, I am the director of Para Arcana Investigation uh, here in Knightsbridge and in the Ministry. Our job is to find abnormalities in magic. Typically, and significantly, we often run into many of these things being caused by fey creatures, or creatures from the other worlds, the plains of the abyss, or those of the gods. Occasionally we'll see things like rampant, like fallen celestials, uh, maybe the occasional angry devil or demon that sneaks its way in. But there's some other fringe cases that come up now and then. Your cases, as you work on them, are not cases which you have a right to discuss with the general population. Anyone you share your cases with, you should do so with the utmost trust in mind. Do not share this information with anyone that you would not share your bed with.
Brianna will nod. After what I have heard about your case involving a young woman and some missing children, we have done a bit of research. It turns out that the Church of Anher has been actively engaged in cleaning out a number of issues related to Fey in both the Northern Mountains. Um, and in the forests to the east. Uh, what are you trying to gauge here? Is he hiding details or is he like being like, can I tell if he's like dodging around something or not so far? Like, no. Okay. There is more to it than that though. Um, after what we learned from the wizard that you spoke with during your debriefing following that case, it appears that there is a greater threat that needs to be discovered. Uh, there is someone that they are referring to as what? Why did I not write this down? Um as the mother. Uh, he started babbling something about this mother, seeing visions of her. And unfortunately, we have had to bring him to a bit of an early retirement. You killed him? Retirement means retirement. Just clarifying. We've taken care of his income for some time. And we're keeping an eye on him to make sure he's not harmful to himself or to anyone else. Um, but it does appear that whatever it is he saw has really had an effect on him. Mm. Almost as if his mind wasn't ready for it. I assume you remember that our former colleague, Baru, also um, succumbed to the same malady. This is where I want to be honest with you because the nature of these cases is rather dangerous. We had informed you that your friend had passed, but that was not entirely true. We of the Para Arcana team were required to report him as dead. Baru fled the city, screaming for the mother's embrace. Once he got outside of the city, we couldn't track him at all. No prints, no hairs, no arcane residue at all. We believe he's out there somewhere. Have there been attempts to scry on him? We... I, I don't think you understand the law, Gulrun. Oh, Scrying requires a substantial amount of legal paperwork that we, unfortunately, cannot just simply make happen as we need. I'm not fluent in the, in the laws, but I would think that this would take precedence and you'd be able to wave that paperwork away to find such an individual. Sounds like he be, could be a danger to everyone, not found. Privacy is important to a great deal of people. And since technically he had not committed any crime, mm. we have no right to 
get a warrant to perform such actions. And he is not a missing person, as he left of his own volition. This is true, I guess, but when we're worried about this disease of spreading... Well, that is where the four of you come in. Hmm. We have very specifically been watching cases. Cases of odd behavior. Especially now, as this becomes more clear what may be happening. We have reason to believe that it is possible either a group of dryads or druids or some other forest dwellers may be producing some sort of high arcane site. A place where magic is overabundant. But the trouble is, seeing things to both the north and the east of us doesn't give us a lot of room to search. We know that Baru fled to the forest. We have sent groups out there to find him. But I think lacking the intimate details of Baru has left them in rougher circumstances. How well did the four of you truly know Baru? I've never met him. He would eat lunch with us every day. He was more of a work colleague. We didn't really <laughs> spend much time outside the office. So there's no real deep, deep emotional bond between you and Hade. No. I mean, of no. course we were sad to hear that he had passed away, but... Speak for yourself, Brianna. I wasn't that sad. <laughs> well... <laughs> Some of us have compassion, I guess. I also did hear that a stranger passed away. Anteus, you're not funny. Ha, ha, ha. Sorry. Well. What we would like to assign the four of you to do at this point is a pretty, this should be a pretty easy, hands-off case for the most part. Um, we would like you to take a little trip into the forest. Uh, we are going to give you an object. Um, since at least some of you seem to have had some at least level of emotional attachment to Baru, this object should help attune you to him, and it might help us find him easier. Now understand, if, you're, if you find him, you're not to engage him in any way other than to speak to him if he will let you speak to him. And let us know where you have located him, and whether or not he is okay. But he has limited family here, none that we were able to find. And you were, what we know of is his only friends. So it is important that we take this carefully. But at this point, he is our closest link to whatever this is that we have been able to capture. Or at least interact with. Excuse me. Oh, that was rough. Um, excuse me. Um, he is the closest link that we have to this that has actually seen some of the source. And he may have more answers that we could use to get closer to whatever this happening is. So we're asking you to venture roughly five miles into the forest and see what you find. See where this guides you. 
Um, and he pulls out a compass, uh, and the compass spins. The the uh, the hand of the compass spins wildly, and he sets it down on the table in front of Brianna. I will pick it up. Um, as you pick it up, it will continue to spin. If you get within a certain range of Baru, if you think of him while you're holding the compass and you get within a certain range of him, it will spin. It is the range increases the closer your connection to the person is. Uh, for many of our for many of our men and women, this was not enough. Uh, this would have required many of them to get within quite a close proximity. I hope that the compassion you have for his loss will shine through as a better beacon than they were able to carry with them. Me too. I, I hope this works. We are advising that you not go further than five miles into the forest. The deeper you go into the woods, the more dangerous things are. Not simply because we are worried about these fey, but also because the woods do contain a number of creatures that have been heavily augmented by magic. Now, I'm not sure how many of you have kept up on your, on your history. Um... But, ugh. Um, anybody else want to give me some knowledge histories here? Untrained? Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. Um, those are some pretty bad knowledge histories. Man, I gotta have all these points so I can roll average. <laughs> well, a 14 is enough to confirm some of what he's about to say. The, the many years of us moving magic through the line, the ley lines of the, of the country, has ultimately resulted in greater protection for us, but in doing so, a greater need for the creatures of the wild to, to be able to survive off of what they have. We have created epicenters built around magic, but they have created, but it has created beasts of exceptional skill at surviving and thriving in dangerous conditions. Our wards, our walls, protect us well from them reaching us at all. But those who venture outside and off the roads, and even some sometimes that, vent, that stay on the roads, have encountered this. Many people have lost their lives to one of the biggest road hazards by not being cautious. The woods are very similar. The wolves are not like the dogs you have here. And they are not like the wolves of long ago. These wolves can smell you from much further. These wolves are hungry, and their bite is much tighter than that of any dog you've seen. They hunt together and as one. Beyond the wolves, beyond the other creatures, there are still the rangers that occupy these woods. They have, we believe, been twisted some time ago by fey and magic, and it has made them unable to be reasoned with. If they see you in their territory, they will declare you as trespassers and demand that you leave. If you leave, they will let you go. However, they will follow you the entire way, 
So if you do not leave the woods, or you get lost, they may choose to attack you, proclaiming that you are liars and charlatans. They can be rather vicious. They are well trained, skilled, with a bow, very silent until they want you to hear them. These dangers, however, we believe you are now well enough equipped for, so long as you, you do as we say, go no further than five miles into the woods. Prepare yourselves well, and stay a team. Remember that no one of you is better than any of the rest. You all have your place. And do not be afraid to run if the threat is too great. Should we head directly to the forest or should we spend some time preparing? Spend time preparing. If Baru has gone too deep, you will not be able to find him, whether it be a few hours or a few more days. But we don't think he's gone too deep. Uh, and if he has, the rangers will have killed him. So you are a last scouting party for him. Once you go, if you do not find him, we will assume he is either dead or fey. Well. We don't really call them fey, per se. There's, there's some terms that I guess we should acquaint you with. There are a few designations of fey. There are true fey, feyan, and fey touched. Fey touched are the kinds of creatures that have over-interacted with fey and have had some level of fey and madness overtake them. Feyan are creatures who have been mutated by the fey's magic. They have spent either too much time or made arrangements with the fey to become more like them. And this has brought them to a state of fey being. Fey are the original creatures, the creatures who are themselves of the of the earth and magic born together. It's important to remind to remind you as well though that not all fey are that the motives of the fey are often uncertain and what we may be perceiving as evil things or bad things may simply be what the fey perceive as mischief. We know not, unfortunately, the exact motives of the woman that you brought to death. We only know what the mites thought. And that makes it hard for us to know what this mother might be after. Perhaps she wants to give people a home or encourage family but her view, her vision of it is different than ours. Remember, their roots are in the wilderness, not in our communities, not in our structures. So try not to treat them as bad people, merely as confused people. It has been a very long time since there was a true dark fae that existed. Brianna is nodding and kind of like taking a few notes, like, you know. <laughs> uh, he'll notice that you're taking notes and uh, he'll like shake his head. Good. That's very good. That's what we want to see. This information should prove very useful. Um, but remember, People do not respond well to hearing about fey or fey and magic. 
or gremlins. Yes. Gremlins. What is our legal authority here if we are to find Baru and he's not going to come willingly? You may ascertain the circumstances. If he seems to be aware of who you are and who he is, and I mean cleanly aware, then you are to simply let us know that he is alive and that he was refused and where he is and we will figure out what steps to take next. However, if he has contracted madness and he is not well enough himself and not well enough able to recognize or remember you, you have the authority to bring him back here to see if we can set his memory straight. While he has not committed any crimes, he is potentially a threat to himself if he is past a certain point. But I will have to leave that up to you to ascertain when you see him, as we were not fully able to make a proper diagnosis before he fled. All right. Any further questions? These are good. That's what I like to see. Um, I'll like look at uh, Elizabeth's full plate and say, <clears throat> not all of us are uh, as well equipped for this mission. Are we getting any funds to help us prepare? Oh, yes. You were not properly compensated yet. Uh, with a lot of the things that were going on with Elizabeth, Elizabeth's coronation, uh, I believe your writs were not properly delivered to you, were they? I, we have an additional writ? So. Yes. Um, each of you will be assigned another 2,000 gold writ. And these Including come with the same... Me? With the same sub stipulations. Including me? Yes. Okay, just checking. So I was saving my other writ. So are these like combinable? Like so, four K total basically to spend on something, or uh, you may combine them. I thought I gave you one K writ before. Should be three. Well, uh, mine was mine was one K. Yeah, should have been one K for oh. everybody. You okay, yeah, because I didn't use anything of it. Yeah. Okay, so total of three K available. Yep. Yeah. Um. So just to clarify something, by the way, in case there's some concerns about like. Uh, loot balancing, by the way. Elizabeth's armor comes with a lot of stipulations. So there is, like, a reason. It's kind of like when we talked about, like, where uh, Antaeus is getting his power from. Um, it comes with its own, like, series of responsibilities and requirements. I look forward to Men your lack of sanity. Mind taker! <laughs> oh, did he say that the... <laughs> Did he say that this thing was um, Baru's, this uh, compass? No, or the compass just, is like, not Baru's. The, this is a gotcha. specially made magical item uh, that is basically a, a locate creature spell um, that has been augmented. And just keeps spinning? It Right now it keeps spinning. Probably shouldn't sleep with that what nearby. Is the, what is the thing you want most? Easy Jack Sparrow. <laughs> does this does this compass just is it just attuned to Baru? Uh, we were... He looks over at Brianna and says, "Think of think of someone in this room." Ah, this is what I was going to test. So Brianna will think about Elizabeth. Okay. the it, The arrow will stop spinning and point to where Elizabeth is in the room. Seems to be malfunctioning. I'm sure you thought of me, anyways. Um, yes, yeah, so I was thinking that this could be useful if we ever lose each other in the forest. The worst case scenario, someone, will, Brianna, could find good, at least one good of us thinking. at a time. Very good thinking. Does um, it, uh, do we need to know the person's full name? You need to be, the more familiar with the person you are, the better it will function. Okay. It is about thinking of that person, and your memories will make it easier for you to find them. Now. This obviously comes with a requirement of this. 
And he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out a series of papers and slides them to each of you. When you are given an item like this, you are obligated to sign off on these papers. These are permissions of fair use. You are to use this for the case only. Use of this for whatever your own personal squabbles are will result in punishment. If you want to use yes, this to find wrong. a cheating lover Excuse or me? to find some popular person, that is not what this is for. Uh, as you but, go over this, Antaeus, you will find that this is this is basically like a, a rock solid like piece of paper, um, making sure that they have full authority to to allow you to have this first and foremost, and to make sure that if you use it improperly, they can prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law. Now, what if we're searching? Does it say anything about searching for somebody specifically that we do believe is connected to the case? It's not explicitly just to... It will be determined by the outcome of what occurs. Okay. I would suggest that you try not to overbend the rules, but I'll I can understand that him. sometimes there are people that have to be looked at that are not just simply Baru that you may need to find. And Teus is a slippery fellow. I'll make sure to keep him in line. No worries. I don't know why he would spread his lies about me. Antaeus, you know very well. Is, um, According to what we know of Antaeus, Antaeus is quite above above board. Uh, Antaeus um, has filled out all the proper paperwork for what he does. Um, and you. he'll actually like reach into another pocket and procure like a document real quick, showing like that Antaeus is legally allowed to like uh, sell uh, pharmaceuticals. <laughs> um, do do I know? Do I I know Baru by name pretty much only, right? Yes. Now, what race would you say Baru is? Because if he's a goblin, we might have some issues, uh, inter-party uh, issues. He's with orcish. Baru is orcish. Okay, good. Then that shouldn't be a problem, right, Gulran? No, he was racist <laughs> against orcs, too. Oh, okay. I am not racist. You guys are very <laughs> unprofessional. Well, you continuously refer to them as those people. What? <laughs> I've never once done that. Well, I figured I would um, make it more palatable. I've had some t bad run-ins with some goblins, that's all. Well, we're not concerned about how you personally feel about people, just how you treat them. Remember that people are people, and remember that a lot of people around these parts aren't limited to just one background. And he kind of looks at you a bit sternly as he says that. When you say meet like Gulron? Yeah. Sorry, um, I keep forgetting you like can't see who I'm looking at. Is it, I want to send, can I look at him? Does he look like he's G a Give me a sense motive slash gauge. Does he know anything uh, about my background? I have a gauge what? skill here. Oh! oh! Yeah, you're like looking him over now and you see like there is a hint of like green to his skin. Like, just the softest kind of, like, olive complexion. Um, and then you realize, like, yeah, the, the the broad shoulders, but the bit heavier statue, stature, this guy is probably at least some portion orcish. Yes. Never had, never but had also, a problem with it. But also, probably mostly dwarf. Oh. <clears throat> yes. Oh, huh, that's an unusual... I've never had a problem with orcs before, so it's just the had an issue with some goblins, but I hope not. No, orcs are usually always tempered of mind and good to work with. At least Baru was. Well, that says a lot. Yes, it does. Uh, are there any further questions about the case? Brianna just signs the paper and like passes it back over to him. Okay. Everything seems ironclad, so I'll make sure to sign it as well. Are we are we all aware that Antaeus is like really good with law stuff? Has this been He reads or? like literally every document that's been placed in front of him beforehand. Uh including the writ. Like he got handed the writ and he like read over the writ as well, just to be sure like the writ itself didn't have any like things in it. So give me a sense motive and you might be able to because he's not really specifically said anything. 
but that's enough to know that like there's been enough times where he's been aware of specific laws that you probably wouldn't have ever thought of. So you could probably but, ascertain he's probably better at this than most other people. Well, we're a we're a tight knit group, and Antaeus, you seem to be well versed in the laws. Perhaps you can just give us and say if it's above board, everything looks good, and I'll take your word for it. Everything seems ironclad. Um, law is not my strongest suit, but I do have some knowledge in it. Uh, everything here seems to be uh, ex- pretty much to the T exactly what he said. Uh, nothing stands out as unusual. Sounds good. And Gulran will sign the paper. And Elizabeth? Yeah, I would have signed it like right away. Oh, okay. He collects the papers. And as he kind of shuffles them together, they all kind of form one piece of paper. And then the piece of paper kind of fades away. Very good. That item is due back here when you return. Um, If it comes out of your contact for a period of greater than 24 hours. So if you leave it in a room somewhere, unattended. If you fall dead in the forest and it falls out of your hand, or the life finally drips from your body, it will, after 24 hours, return to our offices. Has Gluron heard of Blacksmith Inc. before, and is this an item that he would (laughs) know as this? No, Blacksmith Inc. does not exist in this country. Oh, okay. Thank God. Thank the Lord. Here, Um, they have a very powerful group of wizards that runs the country. Oh god. A different evil group of wizards. Um, They're is not there a necessarily way... evil. Come on, why does every group have to be evil that runs one of my countries? Sorry, that was me speaking as a player, not a character. Antaeus would uh admire them. Is there a degree? Is there a cause of worry if this object would appear back to you without us being there? Or is there a contingency for someone to come help us if we're stranded? We will or send units into the woods to find you. Very good. Not that I expect that to happen. We're strapping good standing people. I think we all have experience in our respective fields. I think we can handle this endeavor. With, with the money you're you're given and with your experience, I think this should be... I think we're not sending you off in any sort of dangerous endeavor. We likely would have had you do such sooner, um, but we don't believe that at this time uh, Baru is likely in any sign- any greater danger than he was when he first ran into the forests. Speaking of, um, does anyone have anything of his? Any personal belongings of Baru's? He did not have many, unless he gave something to you all, specific- to one of you all specifically. I have nothing of his. I don't think he ever gave me anything. Hmm. There might be some of his bombs he threw in the sewers but they've probably been cleaned up by now yes the users tend to take care of that rather quickly hmm there's nothing here of his that perhaps he any everything he had he had on him he lived a very very mediocre life i mean that not in the Hmm. offensive sense uh a very minimalistic life sure I prefer the term mediocre. He was not Teach their own, I he was not of good wealth. He was not of many objects. Minimalist implies a choice. Mediocre ah. implies an unfortunate inability to access certain things. You are correct that there is a distinct difference between the two. I do not know him very well. I was hoping that maybe something that he had would have given us um, some sort of clue as to what happened, but that's unfortunate. No. Unfortunately, there's not much I can give you, Greater, to give you any insight into Baru's past. Much of it was rather uncertain to us, even in all that we've done research on. Interesting. Hmm. And did he have a place of residence or anything? A very small place that he was staying on the east side of town. Has it been 
Has whatever's been in there been removed or anything? And that Tyus, don't insult the man. This isn't his first rodeo. I'm sure it's been bed. cleaned I over. I apologize. I'm sorry. Get out of bed. It's fine. There was nothing in the room of value or of note. It was as if someone had let him stay there for a few days. Hmm. And That's odd. Recently, he was being evicted because there was nothing in the room that showed any sign that he was living there, aside from an unkempt bed. Interesting. Huh. They've probably washed the sheets too by now. Well, I'm certain the bed was probably not his to begin with. It was probably a bed that was already in the room. I was hoping that if he had uh, left something, anything of any kind of personal significance behind, that I might be able to uh, try something and see if I could ascertain where maybe he went or I, I understand. maybe get some sort of clues. I understand what would be helpful, and these same things would have been helpful to us. We wouldn't be giving you this object. We would, instead of ourselves, use the items that we had to have a better chance of finding him. Ah, so there are people here with similar skills. Yes. But that is good to know. keep in mind that those skills need to be used in accordance with the law. Of course. And this is a gray area, I'd also like to remind all of you. You are not using have- this to bring him to justice. This is a very important distinction to make. He has not committed a crime. Please remember this. You are using this to find somebody who could be a threat to themselves. If anyone asks, that is what you, what you are to tell them as you bring him back into town. That you believe this man poses a threat to himself and you are just bringing him to the proper professionals to be checked up. And if we find him, we should bring him here? Or is there a specific location that we should be bringing him to? You will bring him back here. There is a special entrance that you will be bringing him through. Um, And he'll give you the location of that in the building. And he'll note that it's not a door either. Um, There is a passage in a wall that you will bring him into. Interesting. Does this... Sounded all familiar, like, um, what's his face's wall? Uh, sort of similar. Hmm. That's specific. It's very important when certain things are a certain way, we not put other people at risk. And this is the easiest way we have to get them where we need them to be without harm, without potentially harming others or exposing others to harm. And are we privy to the sources to which you guys will be bringing him to? Should we have any follow-up questions or anything of that nature? Not at this time. Of course not. I understand. When you bring him back here, during your debriefing, we can discuss more of what procedures will be done. In this time, it's just important that you locate him and bring him back here. And we assure you that we are concerned with not only this information, but also his safety. Hmm. Any further questions? I don't have any. Very good. I wish you luck. Make sure you make sure you're equipped before leaving. You're dismissed. Were we given like a timetable or? He waves his hand across the glass and the glass turns clear as soon as you can get it done. All right. Thank you. You've been helpful. I hope you have, you will be as well. All right. Uh, The four of you have your mission and we will start looking into that next time. Uh, Let me hand out some XP. It's not going to be a lot, but you guys did have some good interactions here. 
Um, everybody can go ahead and take a thousand experience. Uh, some for role playing, some for getting to know other characters, some for giving me a good time. Um, hey, that's the most important thing. Is that I'm having fun. Hell yeah. If I'm not having fun, I can't make you guys have fun. Wait, Ooh. not make you. <laughs> I will make you have fun. Oh, you will you have fun. You. Son of a bitch is have fun right now. <laughs> I don't like Jesus. these implications of forced relations. <laughs> Whoa, phrasing. <laughs> I know what I said. <laughs> uh. All right. Um, I'm not sure on day yet. Um, a lot of this is going to right now depend on like how stressful slash not stressful work is. And when a part comes in for a server that I, I ordered this like really expensive server. Uh, anyway, it's not important. Um, I just didn't get it set up. And so I have to do that sometime next week uh, if the part arrives. Um, so I'm not exactly sure when we will be able to do this next, but I would like to aim for next week if possible. Um, I am definitely, uh, having a lot of fun with this, so. I am too. I'm, I'm free all week, so. Cool. Yep, I look done. I don't have anything going on next week. Okay. Um, yeah, so I will let you know as I get a little more clear on schedule. I think by Monday I should have a much better picture of what my week is going to look like. Um, I should at least have a, I should at least have a shipping number. So I'll be able to identify like when I'm going to be stuck doing this, but this is going to be like a PDQ thing once I get uh, this component in. So um, I will keep you guys in the loop as best I can. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Session guys. Same. Uh, good night stream. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. <laughs>